Do you want to know what's the real curse of wanting to know everything? Keep watching. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Become Secure Now. I am Mariana Turf and I am your favorite therapist and coach if you have anxious attachment style. So don't forget that my master class is still available. I'll leave you the link in the description box down below. It's a workshop that I created and it's about three hours long that you can watch in your own time. If you have, if you're new to this topic of anxious attachment and you don't know where to start, if you don't, if you're not ready to seek therapy, if you're not ready yet and you just really want to see if it's really you, you feel identified with, with attachment theory as an anxious attached person, and you want to know why is this happening to you? Why specifically you? And what to do with it? And what attitudes are, are anxious attached people usually taking to survive and how they might be damaging you? So it's very good for you to learn, you know, and see the manual of what are the things that you might be doing that are not helping your anxious attachment and how to get out. And also anxious attachment is all about leaving your body and going outwards and trying to decodify um, your partner if they're avoidant or if they're emotionally unavailable, if they're narcissistic or whatever it is that they are that is making you suffer, right? We're always trying to reach out and we're always trying to know and find things out. And anxious attachment and the healing of anxious attachment is actually to go inwards. And this is what this masterclass is showing you. It's three hours of emotional connection inward aside from a lot of theory and information that you can get. So the link is down below. Also, if you want a private session with me through Zoom, down below there's also our WhatsApp number and my coordinator Shelby will guide you and tell you everything that is that you need for you and I to speak. And you can access that number from anywhere in the world, only for nice people. So let's start with today's video. Why do I say that knowing everything, it's a curse? If for an anxious person, knowing everything is just as awesome as winning the lottery. If you're an anxious attached person, you're always asking why, but why, but why, but why? All the time, like Mariana, but why? Marianne, I don't get it, but why? And this is all just me. Anxious attachment, anxious attached people is all I treat in my private practice. I don't talk people with other, um, other type of issue. It's just based on anxious attachment. That's it. So I can see that it's very prevalent among the population that I serve, which is anxious attachment. This question, why? Okay, first of all, why is a question that exerts a lot of pressure on yourself? Because you feel pressured of answering it. It's almost like you're asking your partner, but why? But why? And your partner's trying to explain themselves, right? But why? And then you create more and more pressure on your partner. So for an anxious attached person, knowing everything or why people do the things they do, what your partner behaves the way they do and knowing, but why, why do they gain by doing this? Where do they get off? And knowing everything is like winning the lottery, but how come I'm telling you that? No, <laughs> it's a curse. <laughs> okay. So let's go through that. There are three main reasons why I think wanting to know everything for an anxious attached person can be a curse. And I want to reveal that to you so that you stop doing it and then you finally start living. Because when you want to know everything, what happens? It's in your head. Then it goes into your emotions, right? And then it goes into your actions. And then it takes over. It hijacks your thoughts. It hijacks your emotions. It hijacks your actions. So your whole existence is based on wanting to decode your partner and why they act the way they do. So there's no room for anything else. Your life becomes an ongoing cycle 
of your partner, your partner, your partner, your partner, and why they act the way they do, and why, and I want to know, and I want to know, and I want to find out, and I want to find out more, and then you start going into information gathering mode, and hijacks your life, where your life is no longer alive, your life is just survival, and we can't have that, you came into this world to love, and to be loved, and to enjoy, and to have fun, and I mean, I could take it the other way, okay, instead of sounding so cliche and dreamy. When you don't live, and you let all these thoughts of wanting to know more hijack your entire life, the food doesn't taste the same, being with your friends doesn't taste the same, it's boring, because all you're here, and here, and you get that ickiness all the time. Like, oh, why do they treat me like that? <gasps> Looking at the phone and, and, and seeing and what's going to happen. I'm here. He, he or she's not getting jealous. What are they going to do? You look at Instagram and they're with someone else. And then you're like, oh, and then it hijacks everything. It hijacks everything. You want to go to the gym. You're lifting weights. Thinking about the person. <laughs> you want to go with your best friend and shop. You're paying, you give your card, thinking about the person. You're in the dressing room, you're thinking about the person. You're picking through the racks, you're thinking about the person. You want to have the best meal ever to feel better. And you're eating it, you're thinking about that person. Right? So, it's not life, it's just survival. So, when is it a good balance to get to know enough? So I have a playlist. So let's say anxious attached people who is like this channel is for anxious attached people, right? So I know that anxious attached people want to know things about avoidance because usually the type of partner anxious attached people are subconsciously attracted to and avoidance are attracted to anxious attached people. So we become this of the anxious avoidant trap and all that cool stuff that you already know. Okay, so there's a playlist about avoidance. If you want your whole avoidantologist certificate, go watch that playlist. And that's all you need to know about avoidance. Look no further. Because what we need to do for an anxious attached person, the most important part, and this is, I said this when I was talking about the master class, is to look inside ourselves to look inside our own garbage that made us anxious attached (laughs) that's what we need to look at we don't need to look at the outside we don't need to look at what the avoidant is doing we don't need to look at their social media and suffer we don't need to look at how very little we know about avoidance or narcissists or emotionally unavailable people No, we need to know inside. What is that we need to fix? And if you actually get in touch with your inner world, whatever the avoidant does, whatever the narcissist does, you won't care. Or if you'll care, you'll care, you'll care way less. And if it costs you some pain, it's going to cause you a tiny little bit of pain and you will surf through it. But for as long as we're always out and we always want to crack the code on these mystical creatures and these people that we don't understand the way they love, you're always going to be on survival mode. And we can't have that. We have to enjoy life. Okay? I just want to tell you that as an anxious attached person, your outer world is filled with people that abandon you, that reject you, that don't like you, that misinterpret you, hello, misinterpret you all the time, on and on, that jump the gun on you, that assume things about you, that don't ask you, right? Trust me, that's all I, that's all I work with, anxious attached people, <laughs> okay? So I know exactly how your outer world looks like. You feel more, everything affects you more, and then you're like, and it, and things, you're very easily hijacked, okay? Your thoughts, your emotions, and your, your world is easily hijacked by one event that represented a threat of abandonment or rejection or indifference, right? So I already know how it looks like. 
So your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. All that garbage that you see outside, right, is the same garbage that you have inside. You just haven't discovered it yet. You just haven't seen it yet. You haven't healed it yet. You haven't taken out the garbage yet. Okay. That's why the first step is to stop wanting to crack the code on our partners and starting to crack our own code. Okay. So if you're not ready for therapy, don't worry. There's a master class. There's YouTube. There's a lot of things. But about you, to take care of you, not so much the other person. Okay, so there are three reasons. One is because that we believe that if we keep cracking the code on our partner, that other person, I'm sorry, it's almost like we're going to feel better. And it's true. You may feel better momentarily. If you find a video of mine and I tell you you're not crazy because of this, 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 and that, and you're like, oh my God, I got it finally. Okay, and then you understand that you're not crazy. Okay, yeah, brownie point, right? But then what happens? You keep living and something bad happens. All your demons come back in and you're like, I know, same thing. It's almost the same thing as people that go to these churches and they pray and then they're 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 having they're having fun and they're engaged and they feel very spiritual or people that do a lot of meditation and yoga and things like that, right? And once they're out of the studio, the yoga studio or the church, something bad happens and all the demons come back in. (laughs) So that's not going to do it because it's all outwards. We're doing things. It's the inner world that matters. Number two is that you may believe that Wanting to know more is going to make you less anxious and is going to make you, is going to make your partner less avoidant or less narcissistic. And that's not true. Knowing more, yeah, you're going to accumulate more information and is going to lesser the anxiety as to the big question mark that you had in your head, but it's not going to make you less anxious attached and it's not going to make your partner less avoidant or more emotionally available. It's not going to make your partner less narcissistic. It's not going to do that. Okay. Keep that in mind. And the third one and the most important one is that when we are in this information seeking mode, cracking the code, trying to generate some sort of forensic, energetic autopsy on our partners, Okay, what happens? We're so focused and so busy doing that that we completely abandon our inner world. And what did I say earlier? Our outer world full of abandonment from our partners, physical abandonment, emotional abandonment, energetically abandoned, you know, the person abandons you. That's why you're suffering, rejecting you, right? It's a reflection of your inner world. You're rejecting yourself. You're abandoning yourself. Where you, your, your, your conscious, your subconscious, your inner world, the, the, the spark of God, your soul, or whatever you want to call your inner world. It's abandoned. And it reflects on your outer world. So then don't complain. If people abandon you, it's because you have abandoned yourself and you haven't taken out the garbage and everything in there is full of stuff, full of unresolved wounds, full of places you don't want to go and look inside. And it's not that difficult and it's not that scary. It's not that scary. Trust me, it's not going to be that scary. So we want to look inward. We want to look inside. It's just if you feel like you're getting abandoned all the time, it's because you keep trying to decodify other people and abandoning your inner world. And we can't have that because it's not a matter of you knowing more about your partner. It's a matter of you knowing more about yourself and be able to heal yourself so that you get out of this lifestyle of anxious attachment that can be very high maintenance. And it's not allowing you to enjoy and have fun and live through a pattern of healthy relationships. 
you must be sick of all these people you meet online that don't want a relationship, that can't commit, or that you have given somebody else 20 years of your life, five years of your life, and then they break up with you, and three months later, they're getting married, they're engaged to someone else. Aren't you sick of that? Yes, anyone would. Having anxious attachment is not some, something someone can withstand. It's painful. So let's get out and let's look inward what we need to work on to heal. I hope this video served you. And I'm going to make part two where I'm going to tell you where to start. I firmly believe and I have 100% confidence that you can start with my master class to go inward a little bit, but I'm going to make an, a sequel of this video to see what is that we need to look out for first. Okay, here's a kiss and a hug and I'll see you next week. Bye.